Hey, what's up guys? So we're back with another IT lesson and today we'll be looking at types of computers. So um, if you haven't already, please download our app. Um, we have the app with the past paper questions in it and um, you can look into that. And we also have our quiz game. You can actually check that out as well. So anything you want we have you covered the links to these apps will be in the description so you can use them when you're revising and you're going through um, for exams all right guys so let's look into types of computers all right so computers are everywhere in our modern um, society computers vary in size and power and cost as you guys know because if you've tried to purchase a computer for um, um, school work you'll notice that they are sold with varying costs and one of the reasons why they're sold for with varying costs in mind is because they have different power um, um, in terms of power output um, that is what they're able to do and what they're able to accomplish. So that's what we talk about when we talk about power. Um, in terms of sizes, you have desktop computers, laptop computers. You have a whole ton of computers in terms of sizes and power. So we'll pretty much look into those. All right. Some computers are so large, they have special rooms built to house them and we'll be looking at some of those other computers are so small they can be worn around your wrist or embedded in your refrigerator so we learn about these computers and their uses as well um so let's just say let's look into one of the ones that you won't run into often supercomputers all right so super some computers they look a lot like this in the diagram right here at the top, um, not something that is quite user friendly and not something that um, a regular person or a student will ever have to use or encounter. But scientists, um, they use these type of um, computers a lot. All right, so, some, so let's define supercomputers. There are any class of extremely powerful computers. The term is commonly applied to the fastest high performance systems available at any given time. So the highest, uh, the best of the best computers in terms of computing power are normally referred to as supercomputers. Such computers have been used primarily for scientific and engineering work required, requiring our exceedingly high speed, or that requires exceedingly high speed computations. So the average person won't be using those these computers but for instance if you are an engineer or a scientist that you have a lot of data or information to be processed um your regular desktop or laptop computer will not be able to do this you need a computer with extremely high computational power and 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 it it doesn't matter the size to you because these the, the the these computers are normally used by organizations so therefore they are able to house them so in most cases they have dedicated rooms to place these computers and chances are if you ever encountered one there they might be as big or even bigger than your fridge yes your refrigerator chances are is Maybe it could even be smaller than a supercomputer. These things are what you, if for all the students that are going on to become engineers and scientists, you in your lifetime will encounter a supercomputer depending on where you work. All right. So what they what they're used for is common applications. Uh, the common applications for supercomputers include testing mathematical models for um complex physical phenomena are designed such as climate weather and evaluations or evolutions of the cosmos nuclear weapons and reactors so this is what it is There's, it's highly unlikely that you'll have to deal with a nuclear reactor um, in your normal everyday life so all right so pretty much that's it for supercomputers all right, so let's look into another but related field, mainframe computers. And they are a lot like supercomputers. All right, a mainframe or digital computer design 
is, is really designed for high speed data processing with heavy use of input output units such as large capacity disk and printers. This now, these computers really will be um, the, the computers that you find in large organizations. So if you have, if you work like, for instance, let's just say you work for Google or you work for Microsoft or one of those really um, global big um, corporate community um, com companies, chances are you will have to deal with a mainframe computer. If you are the person who is in charge of their info information technology section, you'll have to interface with a mainframe computer. All right, they have been used for such applications as payroll computations. Once again, I'm saying these computers, for instance, if you work at a large organ organization and you have a lot of employees, let's just say over 100,000 that all have to be um, have payroll um, computations and accountings done on their um, salary. It can't be done by a human being and it cannot be done by even um, a team of HR persons. In most cases, it's a computer software being run on a mainframe that does these calculations. Business transactions and information retrievers, airline seat reservations and scientific and engineering computations again. And that's one of the main uses of a mainframe computer. In most cases, another thing that persons won't really interact with in their day-to-day -day life. All right, so let's look at desktop computers. Now, this is one that you, 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 we, we, we know a lot about. A desktop computer is pretty much one of the, it's not a laptop computer. And if you're a bit older, you've seen a desktop computer. Um, so for instance, I don't think I need to go into details in terms of a desktop computer because it's one of the more commonly um phone computers around um around your house um if you don't have a laptop chances are you're using a desktop although desktop computers have become um i wouldn't say obsolete but they're not as in use today as they were previously in years gone by and one of your 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 assignments for this video is to google the different types of desktop computers um, out there because they are now being made smaller and they're now being more compact. So where there was only one type of desktop computer, there are now numerous, um, numerous types of computers out there. All right, so that's it for desktop computers. Pretty common information can be found on the web. So that's your own homework. You can find some list them in the comment section let me know what you found the different types of desktop computers that are available for consumers like yourself okay guys so let's look at um mobile computer devices so mobile computer devices are pretty much you can look at them as pieces of portable electronic equipment that can connect to the internet especially like a smartphone or a tablet so pretty much you you never thought of this but just just imagine your your smartphone is a computer although it is a phone it is a computer let me tell you why. It's able to do calculations, it's able to process data, it's, it's electronic, and it, in fact, in most cases, even if you're using a banger, um, and for those non-Jamaicans, a banger is referred to as a non-smartphone, it is still, which is not, a, it doesn't have a touch screen in most cases, and it has buttons. So, um, that's for you non-Jamaican students, but really what it, it, what it's still a computer because it's able to do calculations, process data, um, communicate. It's able to do everything that a regular computer can do. So most students are not, 
um, do not, I should say, do not realize that their very smartphone um, is a computer. It is a computer. In fact, it's a portable computer and a, a mobile computer device. Your tablet is a mobile computer device. In fact, some TVs are mobile computer devices. So look at it that way. So your mobile computer is your smartphone, tablet, and you name it. Once it can fit in the palm of your hands or it can be moved around easily, it can be seen as a mobile computer device. All right. Okay, so that brings us to our last and emerging computer um, category, which is embedded devices. So embedded devices, um, they are, let me go back in here. They are, they are systems or a combination of computer hardware and software designed for specific fun functions. Embedded systems may also function within a larger system. These systems can be programmable or have fixed functionality. Industrial machines, consumer electronics, agricultural or processing industry devices, automobiles, medical equipment, cameras, digital washes, household appliances, airplanes, vending machines, and toys as well as mobile devices are possible location for an embedded system. An embedded system, in a nutshell, guys, is pretty much a small computer chip that can be put into any device and make it, you hear the term they, they, their persons use now, a smart device. A smart device is a any equipment that has a computer chip in it and is able to carry out functions it would normally not be able to carry out because it now has the computer chip in it. So that's what an embedded device is. The embedded part is the computer being placed in. So the term embed is placed in. Computer is being placed in devices such as your refrigerators, your smart stove, your smart TVs. That's a good one. And um, pretty much even I've seen smart homes where every appliance in the home is actually has an embedded device. All right, guys. So pretty much these are your types of computers. And as the world continues and societies become more modern, you'll notice that your embedded computers increase or your embedded devices will increase. So guys, if you watch this video and you like it, please give it a thumbs up, recommend it to other students that need it. Remember to check the down um, in the description for our apps that will help you to study and help you to enjoy studying. And once again, this is your next assignment please place um, a list of embedded devices that you can find in your house or you know of that exists. The challenge is do not place a device in the, the, the comment section that someone already placed. See if you can come up with something new and place it in there and let's see. I'll be looking in the comment sections. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. More videos are coming shortly. All right, guys. Thank you for watching.